Spaceship Earth, traveling at 90,000 kilometers an hour, takes a year to circle the sun. As it does so, our view of the heavens subtly changes, day by day, season by season. If the sun could be seen against the background stars, each day it would slightly shift position. In Starlog 5, Orion and friends, we viewed a winter sky. Today, we move to summer. Since we met Orion and friends, our spaceship Earth has journeyed over 500 million kilometers through space and six months in time. And now we're looking out at a different part of our galaxy with more stars and different star patterns, including the summer triangle. So, down with the lights and on with the show. These are the stars as seen from the Northern Hemisphere in summer. We fix upon three, Deneb, Vega, and Altair, our signposts. Join them up and they form a triangle. The summer triangle, whose tip, Altair, points south. We are facing south. Deneb is in the constellation of Cygnus, the swan. Deneb is a superstar, 30 times the size of the sun, but 50,000 times brighter. The reason is a high metabolism. She's burning so fiercely that she'll meet an early death, perhaps swelling into a red giant or just exploding a short but brilliant career. South from Cygnus, the Vale Nebula, a ghost from the past. It's all that's left of a star like Deneb that blew up 50,000 years ago, a veil-like cloud of gas straddling the stars of our galaxy, the Milky Way. And so to Lyra, a beautiful little star pattern whose brightest jewel is Vega, rather close to us in space. A touch to the south, hard by the star Beta, the Ring Nebula, another celestial ghost, but clearly visible by telescope. Now, viewed closer too, say from the surface of an imaginary planet some tens of thousands of years ago, the ring would have been quite different. In fact, a star in its death throes. Then, horror of horrors, a gigantic final gasp that puffed out an ever-increasing halo of incandescent gas and dust. A nebula of stellar debris that could still be seen today in the shape of a ring. Again in Lyra, we focus on Beta, an extra special star that's really two. Like a couple of Easter eggs, they're so close that they orbit each other in a celestial waltz that never ends. Their mutual gravitational attraction distorts their shapes. Matter is sucked from one to the other, some of it trailing off in a great spiral. Remember, this is the summer sky as seen from the Northern Hemisphere. Towards the southern horizon, Altair, the brightest star in the constellation of Aquila, the eagle. Altair is another cosmic egg, but for a different reason. Spectrometer readings on Earth show that she's spinning at an incredible rate, right round every six hours so fast that she has flattened at the poles and bulged at the equator. 
at 16 light years away, relatively close to us in space. Like navigators voyaging in the heavens, the Summer Triangle sets our course towards fresh star patterns. Corona in the northwest, a pretty little crescent of stars. Hercules, much bigger and like so many of the constellations, a name from Greek mythology. Next is M13, to the naked eye, a misty blur. But through a powerful telescope, as in these photographs, an incredible swarm of stars. In all, there are some 500,000, almost a miniature galaxy. They're called a globular cluster. Viewed from the point of view of our sun, there exists a whole collection of globular clusters, looking like balls of sugar, and all in the same part of the sky. They form a halo around the core of our galaxy. When astronomers first noticed this, it led to a great truth. Our home is towards the edge of the Milky Way. The sun and the planets are suburban. The excitement of the galactic city center is through the window of the summer sky. South from the Summer Triangle are the signposts to the exact center of the Milky Way. Aquila, the constellation of the Eagle. Scorpius, one of the few star patterns to resemble its name, a scorpion with a sting. Sagittarius, in mythology, half man, half beast, but really more like a teapot. And there, near its spout, is our galactic center, the hub of a hundred thousand million stars, of which the sun is but one. By telescope, we glimpse its very heart. A magnificent cosmic cauldron of gas and dust and stars. the vistas towards the core of the Milky Way. The Trifid Nebula, a billowing cloud of hydrogen split like a flower head, but the divisions between the petals are really lanes of black dust. The whole cloud is illuminated by a jewel, this fierce young star burning blue-white, a photograph from the Anglo-Australian telescope. Dark dust clouds obscure much of the galactic center. But here, in infrared, the interstellar murk is penetrated. A brand new picture from 27,000 light years away. And so to Scorpius and the remarkable red giant Antares, a star at the end of its life. Antares is so diffuse that an average living room would hold just one atom of its matter. Yet it's 700 times bigger than the sun, one millionth its density. The region round Antares is rather busy. A beautiful formation of clouds and lights. Here, Antares herself illuminating surrounding stardust. To the left, a globular cluster. And here, a cloud-coloured blue by hot young stars within. Our final image from the summer sky. This is the autumn sky, and still visible are the summer constellations of Cygnus and Aquila. Pegasus, the flying horse, is new and shaped like a box of stars to which are attached a couple of minor patterns. Our view is from the northern hemisphere. The double line of the Andromeda constellation points us to, just visible to the unaided eye, M31, a namesake, because it's code for the Andromeda galaxy, our nearest major galactic neighbor, 
two and a half million light years away. Another season, another sky. A reminder of the patterns of winter woven around Orion, the constellation of bright stars like Betelgeuse. As spaceship Earth voyages on around the sun, so our picture of the cosmos continues to change. Spring, and we're still looking at the southern sky from the northern hemisphere. Our first signpost is Leo the Lion. There's his head and his body and the brightest member of the Leonid constellation, the star Regulus. The Y-shaped pattern to the south is Virgo, with the brilliant star Spica at its tip. To the north, and we encounter an orange star, Arcturus, in the constellation of Butes, the herdsman. The major constellations of spring at the end of a 12-month sojourn in the heavens aboard Spaceship Earth. This has been but a brief look at the night sky. But remember, the best idea is to go out there and have a look at the stars for yourself. And you don't need to have a giant telescope to explore the sky. All you need is really a good pair of eyes. And it's always a useful idea to join your local astronomical society or club. In the British Isles alone, there are about 200 of these.